It is the biggest ever journalistic collaboration in history. So we're talking about more than 100 news organizations, 300, 400 journalists. It's never been done to this scale ever uh, in the history of journalism. So I'm at my desk one day and I get a call from uh, Washington, D.C. It's the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. And they say, we just got the biggest leak of documents ever in the history of leaked documents. And we want you guys to be involved. And there's only one answer to that question immediately. That's Christmas time. For journalists, that's Christmas. 11.5 million documents never seen before detailing tax evasion and avoidance across the world. We were in. It was insane. What made the Panama Papers easier to do was working with other people. Over 400 of us all talking on a very secure email site and server. And if someone found something they didn't understand, you threw it out to someone else and they would throw it back to you. And that was really quite remarkable. It's really inspiring because we're trained to think of these people as our competition. And you have great respect for them. They do great work. And now we get to collaborate and you know the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And what's so fascinating is we kept all of this huge, vast array of information under this bubble for a year. How that never leaked out, how it never got hacked, how governments didn't figure this out and try and get at us and, and undermine the whole exercise, I still don't quite understand how we pulled it off. We've had another reminder uh, in this big dump of data coming out of Panama that tax avoidance is a big global problem. A lot of it's legal, but that's exactly the problem. Well, the Panama Papers tell us all what we all already knew, which is that rich people can buy their way out of the tax system. That means if you have enough money, you don't have to pay tax. I think it added to the debate of the 1% when it comes to the Occupy movement, the U.S. election. There's a lot of people that are more cognizant of the wealth of the 1% and how they got that way and how everyone else got left behind. So there are two sets of rules for people. There are the people that are in the Panama Papers and there's everybody else. Before this, it was all conceptual, it was theoretical. Now we actually had, we had names, we had faces, we put them on the front page, we showed how they did it. And that changed the game completely. I think that this series, this story, this leak has led to unprecedented uh, change in terms of tax evasion, tax avoidance in this country. We put forward $440 million uh, to uh, the CRA to be able to exactly go after uh, people who are avoiding, uh, uh, avoiding their taxes in various ways. And we got the world's attention and, and uh, you're already seeing hundreds of millions of dollars being invested in uh, cracking down on tax evasion, all sorts of enforcement against the banks that were doing this. It's going to take many years before we actually really understand the full fallout of the Panama Papers.